Hello and welcome once again. Um, so last time we were talking about creating a bouncing ball uh, and changing the style of that uh, and we were previously just doing it with one instance of a bouncing ball. Uh, but in this video I'd like to explore the possibilities that we could get by um, having multiple bouncing balls and how we might go about um, implementing that. Uh, so you can get a pretty cool sketch like this, you know, we've got um, many instances of the ball in different colors. Um, but let's think about, about how we actually might end up programming this, right? I mean, initially we had um, we had variables for x and y of the ball, and we had variables for the velocity. Um, so if we were going to do that for multiple balls, well, how might we actually go about that? Well, one way would be to actually create multiple variables uh, for each ball. So we could have an x1 and a y1 for the first ball, and an x2 and a y2 for the second ball, and so on uh, for the third and fourth, and as many as we wanted. And then I guess we'd also have to have a velocity x1, velocity x2, um, and velocity x3, right? Um, and as you can see, that it sort of gets tedious and, and sort of hard to uh, expand upon if we're doing it like that, if we create new variables for every instance of the ball. If we wanted to have like 100 or 200 bouncing balls, it would get very, very difficult to start programming that. So another approach we might take is by making lists of things. Because you might, you might realize that well, if we have a bunch of different x uh, variables that are representing the x values of the balls, we can just have one array of integers that represents the x value for each ball. Uh, which is, is true, we can do that. We could have a float array um, called x values. Um, and then we could have like all the different values. So the first ball could be an x 200, and then 20, and then maybe 14, and so on. Um, but still, even with this technique, we would have to have another array of floats for the y values, and then another for the velocities. Uh, for the x and the y. So ultimately we have a bunch of arrays and we're trying to manage uh, all of them separately and like the, 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 fa the values are grouped by what they, they mean. They're not grouped by the individual balls themselves, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So if only there was some way that we could sort of group all the data for a bouncing ball into one structure or one object. And there is, thankfully. And it's called object-oriented programming. Uh, and the way we interact with object-oriented programming is we create things called classes. Uh, for example, we could have a bouncing ball class. And what that does is teach, it teaches processing how to create a, a, a bouncing ball. It teaches it what makes a, a bouncing ball type of data. So effectively what we're doing is we're creating a new type of data. Something uh, that the processing knows how to create. Just like it knows how to create an integer, like when you say int or a float, uh, if we teach it how to create a bouncing ball, then we'll be able to use it just like an int and a float. Um, so, object-oriented programming is super important in that respect because it allows us to create really expandable programs and models of things uh, where everything is organized like hierarchically um, in these various objects, uh, and it's basically it's it's just a custom type of data that you're able to create uh, because the bouncing ball itself is not a part of processing like int or float is, since those are primitive variables, they're, they're part of uh, processing, they're primitive data types. Uh, but the bouncing ball is not, that's something that we just made up. But um, through using classes and object-oriented programming, we can just teach processing how to uh, understand the, the bouncing ball data type. So that's what we're going to get into, and then in the next video we're going to start looking at how we actually implement a class in processing.